Hey there, welcome to our AP Legal Zone podcast brought to you by AP Lawyers. We are your top fix for all weekly law updates, including family, immigration, wills, and estates law. Just a friendly reminder we are not your lawyers, and everything contained in this podcast is for entertainment purposes only and not to be construed as legal advice. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you can stay connected with any updates and get notified about our new episodes. Hi everyone, my name is Shereen Abdi and I'm with Angela Princeville and today we're going to be talking about cohabitation agreements. So, Angela, what is a cohabitation agreement? (laughs) Well, yeah, so a cohabitation agreement is between two people who are not married to each other um, and who want to enter into an agreement on how their rights um, or what their respective rights and obligations would be during their cohabitation and in the event that they separate or a person dies, I guess. Um, So some things that you can include in your cohabitation agreement are, you know, how you want to deal with property, your rights and your obligations to your respective properties. You want to talk about um, support. Um, you, if you have children, you could talk about the um, moral training of your children and your education, as well as any well any other matter. Quite frankly, it's free reign for you at this point. You're not you're not confined by the law. Um, you just you can draft your agreement subject to a couple of caveats that we're going to talk about pretty <laughs> much. So, um, I just want to drop this here. Many people think it's a strategy. To, avoid, to, to live together and not get married, to avoid the legal obligation that comes with marriage. Or they don't know that there's going to be a legal obligation arising out of their cohabitation. Yeah, so they think we're not married, and so... And I don't know, I don't, yeah. Like, I don't owe her anything. I don't owe him anything. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Um, even if you keep everything separate, I promise you it still doesn't work that way. Yes. Um, and I think that's a common thing. Even I've even had people that are married that tell me, we're, we all our bank accounts are separate. And I'm like, well, it doesn't matter. But that's fine. And in this case, it also doesn't, it may also not matter. And I mean, I know it's unfortunate, quite frankly, and I don't know how, I mean, I shouldn't say I don't know how. I understand why the law around trusts and things like that exist and why, you know, it's necessary because sometimes it really is unfair to not divide properties, for example, or not make sure that those support obligations exist. I understand why it's done, but it's, It's almost like what's the, aside from the automatic right of married people to equalization, a common law, common law spouses can just make a trust claim and then they get equalization. You know what I mean? So it's almost like. And it also doesn't stop you from getting spousal support. So spousal support is not something that only married people get. And if that's what you construed as, then I'm sorry to break it to you. No, I, here, I, the number of times but... when people are done with a separation and they're leaving our office and they always tell me I'll never get married again. And it's always like, no, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm like, don't tell me that. Yeah. Once you meet somebody and you like them, and again, I'm just going to throw this out there again. Cohabitation in, in Ontario doesn't just mean living in the same yeah. home. Okay, so if you're in some sort of long-term relationship, newsflash, just talk to a lawyer because don't think she's going to stay, as Serene said, we'll keep our things separate. She stays in her house, I stay in my house, and there's no legal obligation. It doesn't work out that way. It doesn't work that way. I actually had um, a client who lived in an apartment building. He he lived in one apartment building, and and then um, down the hall, she lived in the next rental unit. But they were still perceived to be a cohabitating partnership. And it's very interesting because obviously like they kept separate residents, but that's that's the thing that we're trying to make you very weary of. It doesn't I although it may seem for all intents and purposes that you guys are not intended to divide your property or whatever the case may be, it doesn't mean that there's no obligation that could that could arise. So you definitely want to protect yourself. Yes. So yeah, thank you for bringing that out because I think I think that's a very common problem is don't think that you're just because you're not 
trying to get married don't believe in marriage that there's no there's no automatic like legal uh, obligation yeah. yeah it might not be as automatic as yeah. people that have actually married but they it might exist. be annoying if you're the person trying to get something mm -hmm. but it's also very um it can also be very costly for the person trying to defend um their rights to certain um pop property and things like that so be very careful yeah so with cohabitation agreements, I had said there's certain things that you, I mean, much as you have free reign to modify your rights and exclude properties and support and things like that, when it comes to your children, you cannot, you cannot include parenting terms. So you guys can't agree to joint custody ahead of time and things like that. You can't do that. You can only agree to things like you know, we're going to bring them up in the Catholic faith, for example, something like that. Like and even, moral training even and, that is still yeah. subject to the best yes. interests of the even child. That, um, so. Let's say, you know, the type of separation, maybe your child is like 13 years old and they don't want to be Catholic. And mm -hmm. things like, again, it's the best interest of the children that's going to be paramount. It's going to reflect what, what, that, what that looks like for you, for the children. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so when... When you're drafting that cohabitation agreement, you could include any number of, of things, right? So when you're talking about property, um, you know, you may be wondering, well, what do I do here? Well, if your intention is to keep your property because you're not married to this person and you don't believe you owe them that obligation, then we'll just say in the cohabitation agreement that you keep your property. It might seem to you like it's the sensible thing to do. Like it's not her property. It's in your name. How the hell does she get anything? But think about this. If she's helping you pay that mortgage, if she's, if she's the doing the, even the gardening. Yes. Some people are so good that without, because somebody could say, well, she didn't contribute any cash, but some people are so good with their hands that they can make that, they could transform that million dollar house into, you know, $1.5 million house by giving you that stellar garden in the neighborhood, by fixing things Or that in the domestic home. labor, like that yeah. domestic responsibility, you know, keeping and maintaining that home. Like, that might be enough to give someone, um, you know, a trust claim against that property. So you want to be careful. So, yeah. So that's where in the in your cohabitation agreement, you would make it clear that and it could be, well, we're buying one property together and then, you know, that's it. Our investment property, my investment properties are mine to keep things like that. Your accounts, whatever it is that you you um want to keep for yourself then you do that and if it turns out that you actually want to just divide all of your properties because you know you guys want to have this long-term relationship i actually had someone that said well they had a home joint and they were buying um they were starting a business together and he, he part of the the um, girlfriend's condition was she wanted to make sure that she would benefit from the business he actually wanted her to benefit because he wanted her he felt she would make good contribution to the growth of the business. And we can see that in the cohabitation agreement. It was important to do that because she's not entitled to to the business. Like it was a professional business. So he couldn't, for, I don't know, for whatever reason, I, I'm not really sure how that works from a corporate law perspective, but his position was he couldn't add her as a director, which could have been an easier way to do it. But regardless they chose to do that that was their reason that was their why for doing a cohabitation agreement and i think it makes sense so god forbid they break up in the future they already showed the intent to split things um in a certain way right yeah you might even have maybe put the other person as a joint owner but maybe just even to qualify for a mortgage and you may be yes. dating um but your intention was like she knows it's mine you know she didn't contribute Trust me when I tell you, you want a separate document to outline that. We actually remember the case we had where it was it was hundreds of thousands of dollars in a down payment and they put their names as joint. Relationship lasted three years. Well, if you go by title alone, she's entitled to half. To half. So if you put down $500,000 and that home, I mean, most people, the average person doesn't think that after a three-year relationship, somebody should work away with $250,000 and more because the property had increased in value when they didn't pay the mortgage at all. There was no children between them. No like there was nothing. provided by them. Yeah. There was nothing to, But I he guess. He just did that for what... 
he's under our client understanding was just well we're together i just wanted her to feel like you know included and we're like do you understand <laughs> other that? ways to feel included you don't yeah. need to be included on i guess a parcel register like no yeah. one's gonna see that but that but was I guess, that was his intent he yeah, didn't understand nice. he didn't understand the consequences so if he had a separate agreement and it was important to them to show that they have something together then that's fine and i know also from an immigration perspective when people want to sponsor someone it's to show that the the relationship is a genuine one and things like that they we it, they usually would provide documentation to the immigration authorities showing things that they have jointly so obviously if you have a home together jointly that's something that would would be helpful in that context so usually you know the parties need to sign in that context it makes sense to sign a cohabitation agreement saying it, regardless of what title says x only x owns the property and then that's fine so you can include him or her you can do whatever you want to do for immigration purposes without necessarily incurring that huge um liability that you weren't intending to exactly okay so spousal support um i know you had mentioned that um earlier as well like that's the fact that you're not married and she has a job and she's always had a job and you kept your account separate and all of that's not going and to sometimes, fly especially if like maybe i think sometimes people will will think okay well i but i i supported her the entire time and i'm like that doesn't help <laughs> that you. makes it even that worse. makes it worse because now you've you've intended and more uh, you It's you very, you've almost you've, you've created almost you've created a pattern of dependency. Yeah. Now she's dependent on that standard of living. Exactly. And so you're not you just said, going to yeah. walk away from that. You have to now maintain her at this new level that you've taken her to. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're like if you're accustomed to this high high rise lifestyle and you're taking you know thousands and thousands of dollars of vacation a year and you're living lavishly. That's creating you a standard just, of yeah, living you can't that just cut you it off have when to you leave her. Exactly. Um, and I mean, depending on the length of your relationship, that also will determine how long support is paid. So you want to be able, to, you want to be careful. Essentially, it doesn't, it doesn't. Erase and that's your why you need to. That's why you need to draft that cohabitation agreement. So I always tell my clients, like, I don't care. You, you're going to find love again, and I pray that you find love again. But don't tell me you're not going to get married because it's not that easy. It actually. Trust claims for common law spouses is actually more complex than yeah. dealing with equalization claims between married people. So you're just going to create more of a mess. Like, I, yeah, that's exactly. Create an agreement. If you want to marry yeah. them, create a marriage contract. <laughs> If you don't want to marry them, create a cohabitation agreement. Another misconception I've noticed. Sorry, go ahead. You wanted to say something? No, no, go ahead. <laughs> so a misconception I've noticed people would have is, well, we intend to get married. When we get married, I'll do a marriage contract. So don't worry. We're not going to ask you to pay us twice, okay? Your cohabitation agreement becomes a marriage contract once. That's actually what I was going to add. <laughs> yeah, so you read my mind. And that that's actually very interesting. So you I, it's worthwhile for you to have a cohabitation agreement even in the event that you want to get married but even in the event that you don't it's 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 very critical yeah and if she has a job and you have your job and you just want to introduce um him to this new lifestyle but you want to make sure that you're not funding that lifestyle for him after the relationship or you're not going to there's only one way to do it not by arguing <laughs> not by telling the courts that you know he didn't work and i did all of this for him why should i continue none of that's going to help you the cohabitation agreement is the only thing that can actually help you so it's i think it's extremely critical frankly i I think it's even more important to get a cohabitation than agreement a than a marriage contract. I actually was going to say that as well yeah. because it's a lot more difficult to deal with trust claims than it is with and people, marriages people because have at least misconceptions. They know. Yeah, at least exactly. At, at least, least you with know marriage, what you're getting into sometimes. Well, we imagine that you at least for the most part we find that the you know, you know what you're getting into. What I find sadder is like people actually decide and this is i say this from the experience of my clients that are usually leaving my office after i finalize their divorce or something saying i'm not going to get married they're actually going into common law relationships thinking that they're going to avoid all of the mess and i have to educate them and say no you're actually going if anything happens you're going to come back with a bigger mess than what we've just gone through. So please just do that cohabitation agreement and then forget about it. Go ahead and live happily ever after. 
why I also like agreements like that is, and even with marriage contracts and things, I feel like sometimes, not I feel like, I know sometimes when married or um, common law spouses are in having arguments, many times one party, the party with more to lose financially, can't even have that discussion freely or openly because they're so scared of the obligations you've seen it in your practice how many mm -hmm. times have people come to us only to separate five years later yeah. because when they talk to us and we tell them that it's a bad they can the relationship is so bad they've spent mm -hmm. the first hour telling us everything wrong about this relationship and then when we have that conversation with them about their legal obligations we don't see them anymore and i get it <laughs> because it's huge they can't even you know they can't even fathom like going through with things why would you want to leave that way and yeah. the problem is most people i have i actually had a client came back to me five years later and it was nothing but regret because everything i all of the obligations i told him he had five years prior had pretty much doubled income had doubled mortgage was now paid off um what else they were like so yes it, um wife had gone i'm sorry um girlfriend had gone longer without um you know working and all of that trust claim is now more solid because we've gone from a a 10 year relationship to a 15 years and counting relationship so it was worse all through and i said if you had i and i did advise that at that time i'm like you can do this cohabitation agreement right now and if he had done that you could easily and honestly work on your relationship without worrying about the financial you can consequences have a better sleep like who wouldn't want that yeah and i can promise you our clients after they go through a separation they know they know when they're getting into a relationship to come back and get a cohabitation agreement yes because they know the importance of it now and had they had done had they had wished i guess that you know they had to come to us sooner had known I'm sure it, I'm sure things would end up differently. Um, yeah. And the one thing I, I, I think we didn't mention was child support obligations for your significant other's children. Yes. You definitely don't want to be paying child support. I mean, you may, from a personal or moral obligation, want to, but mm -hmm. you don't want that obligation from a legal perspective that you have to support your your mm -hmm. significant other's children so if you have children if they have children you have children coming into the relationship and the other and the other party doesn't want that obligation you can actually waive that obligation in the agreement so it's worthwhile to have one yeah that's that's a very good point to to remember too yeah because otherwise you have a legal obligation right okay so the last um area i want us to touch on is sort of just signing that agreement, creating an agreement between yourselves and signing it versus having a lawyer draft it for you. Um, well, not to not to be biased, but please get a lawyer to sign it. Prefer, prefer, or at least review we, it. At least review yeah, it. Let, at least the to very let least. you know what you're signing makes sense. Yes. Is it actually it ha it, it encompasses the wishes and the obligations that you actually want, you know? Um, and yeah, just because sometimes people draft contradictory um, terms without the understanding the that they're drafting contradictory terms, most or the they would get templates that are not that are from maybe U.S. companies and yes. things that are, and I see clauses that are not enforceable in in Ontario, and so ninety nine percent of the time, yeah. we have to we suggest that we just draft a brand new one that encompasses what you many actually times the want. people actually suggest it to me because by the time I give them the changes that need to be done for it to make sense, <laughs> it really just makes sense for them to have us draft it so that so you 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 want this agreement for your peace of mind. It's worth it to just get it done. A hundred percent, it's worth it. Yeah, make sure once we have it drafted, part of it, it's not done there. We have to make sure that it's properly signed and it's and witness. Wit witness. We make sure that the other party gets independent legal advice, or at least has an opportunity to do so and declines. Yeah, we don't like when people do that. We prefer for you to get independent legal advice, but there's certain circumstances where we really don't care. Um, and then lastly, you know, and wait, I want to go back to that one. There's very few circumstances where we don't care about independent legal advice. Very few. Yeah. And honestly, actually, it's probably only one. That's usually when the other side, the person that's not getting independent legal advice, is the one that has a better deal. Yeah. The so, one that has really nothing. Like, like that has. So if, if my client's the one that's waiving 
all of the property and whatnot and the other side is getting the benefit of keeping all of their property and everything in those circumstances i might not be as particular but if it is reversed i will insist because okay. it's not it's not worth it if they sign it's sometimes just that lack of independent legal advice could be grounds to set it aside disclosure it's important again for you guys to disclose what you each um own as of the date of the contract to each other so that both of you can make um, informed decisions about exactly. support and property. And then just make sure that you do not put undue pressure and, and duress on the other on the other party to sign the agreement. Yeah, forcing someone to sign the agreement, it just doesn't help you. Blackmailing them into do it doesn't help either. So yeah. they want to make an informed decision. They want to agree with you. It might not be conflict free. And that's why both have lawyers. You talk about the terms. It's OK. Don't. And that, which is why I also discourage people doing it themselves. It's better for you to use the lawyers as buffers. Let's have those difficult conversations and let's get this done and you can take your agreement and you guys can go live happily ever after. So that's all I have for today on the topic of cohabitation agreement. Shireen? That is all we have. Thank you so much for listening um, and, and join us for our next episodes. Bye for now. Bye. Thanks for listening and joining us in the AP Legal Zone. We hope you enjoyed this episode. You can find more episodes by searching AP Legal Zone on anywhere you watch podcasts. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast today so you can stay connected with any updates and get notified about any new episodes. Mm-hmm.